Good afternoon, everybody. This is Warren Davis. We are here for your live Investment Dominator Q&A call on a very busy Thursday. I think it's October the 10th, 2019, and sure hope everybody is uh, doing well and uh, getting ready for a wonderful weekend and that you've had a very hopefully profitable week and uh, hopefully not too busy. We are in uh, you know, in my household right now, we're in uh, this mode. We're going to be going out of town, uh, in fact, this afternoon. So I'm going to, uh, by I'm saying that because I'm making this announcement even now. Uh, hopefully, everybody can, first, everybody can see my screen. Let me do a quick sound check and a quick um, visual. You can see the diagram I have up for, um, okay, Rob says you can. And I'm hoping everybody can hear me okay. Well, I was just, as I was saying, we were going to be going out of town this afternoon. Uh, we're going to be in uh, a wedding, I think, tomorrow. And uh, tonight's the rehearsal dinner, et cetera. So we're in, and, and my household's in wedding mode. This is uh, one of our sons getting married. And so it's it's an exciting time, but it's a extremely busy time. Uh, I know nothing about uh, planning a wedding. And uh, so I guess my wife was volunteered for the, you know, planning the event tonight. And so I'm... I am a rehearsal dinner planner by default, and I don't even know what I'm doing, so I'm just being directed. <laughs> if you can, you can understand that. So in any case, it should be a lot of fun. It's just been so busy uh, this morning. In any case, we're going to get your questions answered here. We're going to get as many as we can answered. We'll probably be stepping off the call about maybe five or seven minutes early. Um, you know, my part of this before I go out of town, of course, is to handle all my coaching calls. So I've got a coaching call coming up after uh, our this important call, this webinar today, and then uh, we'll be heading out of town for the weekend. So we did have some questions left over from last week, and I, I do again want to state that uh, those of you, some, from some of the new students I think maybe have been trying to reach out to me on Facebook. Um, we, we do have a Facebook presence, but it's it's for our business. So um, I, I don't normally look at the Facebook. I don't usually man the Facebook. So I please, I don't want anybody to, to get their feelings hurt because I don't even look at it. Usually my wife is the one that's, you know, she handles all of the Facebook correspondence. So she sees it all the time. Um, she says there's some some comments or questions coming through from students for me on Facebook. And I, I really, I'm sorry I can't answer those, and I'm not trying to be antisocial or anything, but uh, I just I can't respond to the inquiries on Facebook um, simply because I don't see them. And uh, <laughs> I, anyway, I don't even want, want anybody to be upset, but uh, that's that's just the way it is right now. So we're going to get um, get started. I kind of feel like I'm I didn't have really a lot of time preparing um, like I normally do for our calls, uh, but we are did get all the questions answered from the last call that we had on Monday. And so we're gonna be reviewing some of those calls today. As a matter of fact, the first call or the first question, uh, I'm saying calls, but the first question that we had, uh, that we're gonna look at today came from Jill on Monday. And Jill asked about uh, a tax letter do we use a tax letter in uh, when we mail out our offers? And we most definitely do. Um, I tell you, I feel I feel like I'm 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 not as organized as I normally am. However, uh, so you're seeing at my screen right now. Just want to make sure those of you that are new, I should have gone over this right away. Know how to answer or know how to. Uh, Send in your questions. <laughs> oh boy, what a day. So type in your questions. You have a control uh, box, hopefully over to the right part side of your screen and you just type in your questions and don't worry about the hand uh, because I, get, I normally don't see that. Uh, I am asking that you put a question mark or the word question in front of your question so that I can uh, make sure that it's a question and not a comment. And I appreciate both. Uh, so in any case, if you would do that, that would be appreciated. We're going to get right into getting your questions answered. And as I forestated, do we use a tax letter? That's question number one. 
do we use a tax letter when we send out our offers? And we definitely do. I want to highlight that by going to your investment dominator land profit generator. And so I'm going to log in there because uh, this is where you can find that document, that particular tax letter. So what, uh, what Jill was referring to is when we send out an offer, it's a piece of documentation that goes along with our offer letters. So someone, we've already sent out a neutral letter. Someone has replied back, you know, yes, I want an offer on uh, my property. And so we're now going to be in the mode of sending them out an offer. And along with that, we will send this other piece of documentation that kind of, uh, it sees that's under documents. And we call it a capital loss letter is basically, and I just want to make sure everybody knows how to find it. So I went into, I logged in and I'm just selecting all the documents and I'm scrolling down to capital loss letter. And this is an example of what your capital loss letter that's in your LPG looks like. And it's basically stating that if someone does incur a loss on any property that they sell, that uh, they can actually get a tax deduction. So, you know, they should take that to their CPA. And uh, this is actually according to a tax code um, that you are allowed to deduct losses from the sale or disposition of any capital assets, such as your land. So we send this letter along with our offer because our offers are low offers, right? And we want people to know that, uh, okay, we might be giving you a low ball offer here. And if you accept it, here's another benefit to you accepting our offer. You know, you can get a tax deduction um, and have a chance to maybe get a bigger refund if you send along and if you do incur a loss on your property. So this is just something that we, we send along. I wanted to make sure you knew exactly where to find it uh, because in terms of rating, um, you know, how many uh, offers accepted, it does help. At least people, you know, it, it puts in their minds that they are not completely, you know, losing out on their property, that they, they have something else they can claim. So this is helpful with a lot of the uh, sellers of property. Now, I'm going to be actually inquiring when they do come back. As we go forward, now that I, I'm, I can have some more time, I can inquire and say, well, hey, did you happen to read the capital loss letter and did that actually weigh into you accepting our offer? Because I'm, I'm, uh, I'm interested in knowing that. And so uh, Jill is also asking, did we customize? Did we customize the capital loss letter? No, we did not. We send it just as you saw it there. Um, you know, we sent it out and have them read it. And if they have any questions about it, they can usually get with their CPA. Um, so to answer that question, no, we did not change a thing about the capital loss letter. It went just as is. And so that came from our own CPA that we use, Warren Tarrell, and very good CPA, knows, uh, many, many ways to help you in your land business. So hopefully you'll take advantage of him when that time comes. So the other question that we had, uh, you're very welcome. Very welcome, Jill. The other question we had uh, came from Carlos on uh, Monday. And he asked, uh, what's the best place to get, okay, what's the best place to get the list of properties? Okay, so he sounds like he's look, he's actually looking for a county list. So the question is, you know, where is the best place to get a county list? And of course, there are more than one option. Uh, do you know, should you get it directly from the county? And, or should you go through a, he says a subscription, or I'd say that's Agent Pro 247. 
um, county or subscription. And I'm just going to note it's probably, it's probably speaking about Agent Pro 247 or Rebo Gateway. And the answer to that question is it actually depends. And opinions are going to vary here. Um, whether or not you get the list from the county directly or if you get the list through agent, you know, from Agent Pro or Rebo Gateway, it depends on number one, maybe your expertise with Excel. If you're a person that is, you know, very skilled in Excel and know how to modify Excel spreadsheets and use, you know, um, the algorithms that that Excel does provide and you know how to use the tools in Excel, you might be a person that says, well, hey, I'll go directly to the county. That's what we did. We went directly to the county. We email them or we in one case, we sent one hundred dollars, one hundred and seven dollars, and we received an entire vacant land list. Um, from the county and then we had to you know massage that in excel ourselves and then begin to send it out to the various counties and so it it also depends if uh so your expertise in excel is one thing the availability of your time and budget is another thing um okay that's and that's another question coming in and i'll, I'll get to that one rob um so do you have the time to actually take an Excel spreadsheet that's going to come from the county? And in some cases, we got a, we got a county list. We asked for vacant land, but we actually got a list that had houses as well as land. So do you have the time to go through and separate all those records and only pull out the vacant land list? Because we, we got a use code along with that county list. And every time we had a certain value for a use code, that meant vacant land. And the other values were, you know, obviously land with houses. So we had to go through and, and separate that data. Um, so if you have time to do that and you have the expertise, that could be a very, to me, it's a very inexpensive way to pull your county data. Um, because when you go to Rebo Gateway or Agent Pro 247, these are services. And believe me, they're going to the same counties that you go to, they're going to that they're going to take that same county data, but you're paying them to obviously to massage the data, pull the vacant land list, you know, versus the land the list with the houses on it, pull the data based on your search criteria that you give them, put the data in Excel and format it for you so that you know you can then come and format it again, although and bring it into the investment dominator. So you're paying for that service. Um, so that, that would be my answer. It's good to go directly to the county if you have the time and you have Excel expertise and you don't mind manipulating the data. If you don't have the time uh, and you don't have the budget, that uh, leads us into the next question that, that Rob is asking. Um, very good question is if, if you have a limited amount of time um, and you have a limited budget, do we advise uh, for an ideal answering service? Okay, that's a that's a different question, Rob. <laughs> I, th I thought you had something to do with our with the list. Um, but if if you have a limited budget, you might want to think about emailing the county, talking with them about records from the county, and then after they send you the list. Then you know what we would, what I would do personally, I would send it to one of our VAs that we we have that work for us, um, and that work for everybody actually. And this person can take that list that comes from the county and put it into the investment dominator format for you. And uh, just in case I didn't, I tell you, phones are going off all over the place over here. We had, uh, <laughs> ah, it's a good day. It's a good day. Um, I'm just going to list it up here for you. Your list hero at gmail.com. So this is an, an email address that, uh, I, in fact, I don't even remember the young lady's name, but we use her um, when we get 
some of our list and it's your list hero at gmail.com if if you wanted a good va that could actually take a land list a large land list and put it into investment dominator ready format so you might acquire the list from the county you don't want to take the time to massage it you send it to your list hero at gmail.com and she will actually uh, put that in excel uh, the csv file format she'll put it in um, you know comma delimited file so that you can then import you know a portion of your records into investment dominator and uh, that's the way i would go if i had a limited budget limited amount of time for parsing data and that's actually the way we we do it now um, so you know how would i use rebo gateway or Agent Pro 247. Um, good question. I would use Agent Pro 247. I think I've already stated this and Rebo Gateway. If I were doing a sampling of data, like I was going into a new county and I wasn't familiar with the county's website and I, I needed to have some data I wanted like you know 500 records or so I wanted five or 700 records to test a brand new county and if I didn't want to take the time to become acquainted with how to navigate around the county websites because some of them are much easier than others to you know to get around I would use Rebo Gateway or Agent Pro 247 um, to get a sampling of records that I want to mail out to a brand new county so that's how I would use them you know myself personally but it is is totally up to you when when we first did you know we had four different counties we were mailing to after being in the business you know like four or five months and it took us about three days to format data that came from those counties even in, in Excel and put it in the format that investment dominator is ready to accept and uh, it's a lot of checking, it's a lot of work, and uh, it was it was some late evenings. So it's up to you. But we ended up with about a, a year and a half's worth of data that we would send out to four different counties that we were working at that time. Um, now we did learn from that process that we wanted to do it easier. So we decided, okay, we'll get the county list, but we're going to definitely send it to our VA and have them. Um, do the work for us and uh, that made you know that made our life a lot easier so i'm hoping that answers uh your question carlos it's kind of a long-winded answer to your question but it's i think it was important to um make sure you understood um how we might use rebo gateway and if you're starting out right now and and you know that's that's the way you want to go and your budget allows for that i say go for it because you can you can still have uh, the same success. You can, you know, they they're going to pull from the same counties, and you don't have to worry about the county website. I I do want to say though that you you probably do want to learn each county's website because when you do your analysis, one way or another, you're going to end up in that county's website, and it's going to be to your advantage to know how to navigate that site. Okay, so. Uh, moving on to another question that we had. Uh, let me see if I can if I can catch Rob's question here. Uh, there's a few coming in. So, okay, having a limited budget, say, do you advise for uh, ideal? Oh, the ideal answering service. Okay, you're probably talking about. Um, Your, uh, you're talking about Pat Live, which is a call service that answers the calls for all the neutral letters. So all these neutral letters are going to go out. Um, you know, when we do generate documents, you're going to have all of your neutral letters go out here, and someone is going to have to answer the calls that come back from all these different neutral letters, and so. That's probably, I think, what um, 
Rob is referring to, an answering service that once these neutral letters go out, um, will there be, uh, can we give advice for an answering service? And, and I would say, uh, Rob, we started out using Pat Live and we still use Pat Live. Um, because we were working full time and we really couldn't take the volume of calls that were coming in. Now we were only sending out 250, maybe 300 letters a week. Um, okay, I'm just jotting down the question here. But even with that, um, I was just sharing with a student uh, the other day, you know, individuals will call you uh, from these neutral letters you know, a lot of them want to make the call before they get up and go to work. Well, um, you know, our our counties were back towards the East Coast, so that's three hours difference in time. So a lot of our calls that came into Pat Live would end up uh, coming on, you know, at like four o'clock in the morning or five o'clock in the morning. Well, I'm thankful that I had Pat Live in place because they answer the um, calls, you know, 24 seven. So I would recommend, you know, using Pat Live. And uh, if you do, um, keep in mind that you have to manage Pat Live, you have to make sure that they're not going to, you know, they're not spending too long on the phone. And uh, I, I go into some detail in the two day workshop on how to manage Pat Live. And I think there's even some calls that we've already done. But if you want to go under help and search your user guide, and I think if you type in call center, you'll come up with some articles. Um, using a call center to take your calls is uh, what describes, I believe that's one describes Pat Live, yes. So it shows you, talks to you about signing up, you know, the estimated call time for these. Um, and basically, you can contact them at this 1-800-899-0607 and talk with them about uh, getting started. And then definitely listen to one of the calls we've had. Um, it might be this April 15th call that we had, but there's some, some real detail around how you manage Pat Live. So definitely get some knowledge about how to deal with Pat Live before you just, you know, sign up and talk with them. And uh, for us, Pat Live works out very well. I'm, I'm debating on right now if I'm going to change it now that I'm retired and I'm off the job. But I think there's other things I want to focus on. And, you know, taking prospect calls is not really one of them at this point. So that will be up to you and your business how you want to handle that. OK, let's move on here. Um, so we had a question, a good question from Mike regarding what option term, and he's speaking about um, do we recommend? Do we recommend? And he said uh, three month or six month or something else, and. What, uh, just for the benefit of those of you that may not know, what Mike is speaking of actually is when you send out your offer letters, we say generate documents, and you look at your different offers that go out of Investment Dominator, there is an actual closing date that gets put on the offer letter. You know, it's, it says, okay, net to seller is the amount they're going to get, but under the closing date occupancy, this contract will be closed and the deed and possession delivered on or before 4-7-2020. Now, you notice that we're only in October, right? So we've given ourselves six months. Now, that's the term that we have set up. In, in ourselves for, for our business to give ourselves six months to close on these properties. And there's a whole discussion around whether or not, you know, um, sometimes sellers call and they want to know, well, hey, why is it so long, why, you know, to close? Especially this time of year, 
people are looking for money for the holidays. So we've, we've got some calls that have already been coming in and you know, folks want to close in the next 60 days, if at all possible. So if we, we send them back a document that says, you know, 4-7-2020, they have some questions about that. So um, if you want to change those terms, that's the next question we get. All right. How do we modify this term so that it goes from, you know, three months or six months to give yourself 90 days? Now, let me just say a little bit more about that. It, you know, we give ourselves 90 days, or excuse me, 100, 180 days. We give ourselves six months because three months, 90 days goes by much faster than you think. Um, when your business really gets rolling and you have a lot of prospects that are calling saying, hey, I want offers on my property and you're, you're, you're handling not only negotiating some of those. Remember, they're going to get into pending preliminary research. Um, you know, you're now ready to send these offers out. And we, you know, we were we were averaging about 30 um sometimes anywhere from 25 to 30 offers a week going out well i have to do the i have to do the analysis on all of these records that are in pending preliminary research that in itself takes a long time so um i'm i i may have other folks that have already said oh yeah i accept your offer and their property is now being marketed so they're in a you know they're on our website and we have buyers calling about those properties we still have other sellers calling about you know wanting to discuss the offers that we've sent them and i'm doing marketing research so I, I'll, all i'm saying is three months goes by very very quickly when you're busy with other things and you have to you have to make time to call the county when you get ready to do your deep dive now when someone says i accept your offer Remember now, we're going to now change that status. Okay, they've accepted our offer. We've had the offer option been sent. Now they've accepted the offer. Now we're going to open escrow and we do our detailed research at this point. So you're going to be really looking closely at the restrictions on these properties. My bottom line, what I'm saying is it's a lot of work that you're going to be doing um, so that you can get this land ready to sell. And then there's the marketing itself putting it out on Facebook, putting it out on Zillow, putting it out on Craigslist, that that amount of activity takes time. And when you have, you know, like four or five of these that you're doing at the same time, and you might be still working a full-time job or you're working a part-time job, um, that takes you some time. So three months goes by very quickly. I recommend you give yourself, you know, six months. Now, that's just my recommendation. Um, Opinions will vary on that. So if you want to modify, if you do want to modify those terms, how do you do it? You go up under Customize. Let's see. I'm just breaking down the question here. Um, modify the terms for both option and contract. offers okay under customize and it's document template settings so you're going to left click there you open that up and you scroll down and you can see here this one is for the default offers expires and this is for your contract on the close of estro and you can see we have it set at 180 days um, if you want to put it back to 90 days or if you want to if you want to you know, leave it at, at 90 days i think it defaults to 90 days three months um, and if you have an option, um, this one, ours, because we don't really do options, but it's ours, is, this one is set at 90 days. You can leave it at 90 days or you can move it to 180 days also, uh, which is what I would recommend. And you always want to hit update site. So again, you go into customize and it's documents, template settings and scroll down. And you can change that value in here and hit update site. So 
that is the way you would you would change that if in your company you decide, hey, I want to, uh, you know, give myself a little more time. And uh, hope it makes sense what I'm what I'm sharing with you is a lot of activity goes into uh, your your days and your days will go by very fast. So, um, okay. If, uh, let's see, the next question we had came from Paul on, uh, I think, um, on Monday. Okay. Yep, Paul had a very good question on a site. This is a little bit involved, but we're going we're gonna to ha handle as much of it as we can here today. Our time is really going by fast. So when a prospect, question from Paul, when a prospect responds, um via the website and this is kind of an unusual case but it does happen okay the question is how do you handle different owner mailing address okay and i'll explain this uh hopefully by showing you how this might even happen um, and it can happen when you so you've sent someone an actual offer or it's not an offer but you've sent someone a, a prospect letter and one of those owners might come back into and they might actually end up on your buying site and and we've had this happen a, a, a couple of times but usually they you know it's the same address that the county has um, but there are those times when an, an owner will say okay well um you know that's not my correct address or or they're going to they they've decided to change their address so they got a prospect letter at one address they come into your site because remember your your buying site is on that is probably going to show up on that neutral letter so they've come into your site now and they say oh, okay I want to still I want to sell my land for cash and so they come in and they type in their name first name last name primary phone number they they've even got a reference uh, number right so we'll do this example with uh, Juan Delgado and primary phone number I had to test this myself to see exactly how it would work. But uh, so we have a phone number and see investment dominator is checking all of this data that is being put in, which is a pretty cool feature. Um, to give you an example, now I know the reference number is actually 151, but if I were to put 141 uh, and try to get in, Investment Dominator will pick that and say, oh, oh, there's a number, a reference number that's not in our system. So basically this data, this first name, last name, um, if there's a primary phone number has to match along with the reference number because that's the actual owner's ID that is, that's gonna print on their reference letter. So the, the question actually came in, if, if the owner comes in here, types in their information, and we're gonna type in 151, um, I believe that's the correct one for this gentleman. Okay, see, it brings me in to my contact information. And if the gentleman comes in here and the county had this address, right, this mailing address, this city and this state, but the owner um, puts in a different mailing address, Okay, and the city, I believe I had Demar, and instead of it being in Florida, um, he's in Pennsylvania. So basically, and I'm trying to make it real different so that, uh, you know, there's no way we could, there's, these are going to be two separate, it's going to end up being two separate addresses completely. So the owner puts in a different address 
from the address that you got from the county that's on his prospect letter. Okay, so he's now basically updating his address. All right. So remember, it's going to be the same APN, you know, it's the same APN because he's talking about the same parcel. And we might put in here, you know, seven acre parcel. He might, you know, he might answer some other information about the property. But the see, owners can come in here and do this. Um, and then, so now remember, you see it says finish offer request. So what this is going to do, Investment Dominator is going to check the name, the address, the APN, and it's going to say, okay, do I have any records that match this in my in the Investment Dominator database? And the answer is going to be no. And, and remember, it's going to be an offer request. So it's not going to be in prospect status. This is going to be a record that's in pending preliminary research status because an offer is, uh, this is like, this is where a customer comes if they want an offer on that property. So you say finish offer request. Oh, there's another required field that I have to fill out. Ah, and that's this one here. I have to verify. I verify that the form is complete and correct to the best of my knowledge. Okay. Okay, and there's there's some other required fields that are on this screen. Um, definitely the ones with the asterisk, so it's city, state, and zip, and I think uh, property, what state is the property located in, and what county. So anything with the asterisk over here, these are required fields. All right, so let's finish the offer request. It says, thank you. Your offer request has been successfully submitted. You should be expecting a written offer from us in mail in the within seven to 10 business days. So the, the buyer has now come in, changed their address, and you go back into Investment Dominator. And let's do a search for that last name of Delgado. And we search. Okay, there's one. Okay, it didn't do what I expected it to do here. I expected. Well, let's go see what, what's in that record now. Let's see if it updated. Hmm. Well, I actually tested this before. And it didn't do that. <laughs> That's interesting. That's interesting. That's what I've wanted it to do. I would have wanted it to find this particular uh, owner and actually update, you know, that owner record information, which it actually which is that's exactly what it did this particular time. When I tested it the other day. I ended up with two separate records. Um, one record was in prospect status, and the other record was actually in pending preliminary research status. So I ended up with a couple of records, and I'm I'm not sure why it didn't do it again. But anyway, it worked the way I would have wanted it to work in the beginning. Interesting. Make sure. I do that right again. Okay. All right. Well, it worked. So I think that's something you have to you have to keep your eyes on though. Um Okay, uh Oh, to answer your question real quick. Yes, Carlos. This webinar will be in the members area um after I post it. Uh give me until Saturday time frame. Um so that you can review it. So what I would I, I I'm glad that this worked like that because when when buyers do come into their your buying site and they put in their correct information here, sell the land for cash. Um I think the fact that he put in the right reference number 
uh, is what really did the trick. Um, let's see, and I'm not going to try to I'm not going to try to mess it up, but but this this does happen sometime. So what I was expecting, what it would happen to me the other day is I actually ended up with two separate records for this Juan Delgado uh, with the same APN number. And so there was one under pending preliminary research and there was one under prospect status. And that's what I think you, you do need to watch out for. If you do find you know, duplicate records with the same individual's name, the same um, APN number, obviously that's a candidate for a merge okay so if you if you and i'm going to show you how to do a merge here in a little while because we had a question on that from the other day um so let me make sure i've answered paul's question so how do you handle different owner mailing address being provided uh than the owner address received from the county it looks like investment dominator will handle that for you so Investment Dominator will take that information that the in individual enters on the uh, buying site and will update it so that uh, so that there's still only one record. And uh, I, I'm glad it works like that because I, I don't like dealing with multiple or duplicate record situations and having to merge them. And it's happened a few times. But that this again is a is a kind of a rare occurrence. Most buyers won't uh won't come in to the site and actually update their information but there are that some they you know that will do that okay hope i didn't cause any more confusion on that so when if we came to the point where we have um two different two different records for the same parcel of information so we have and that's a candidate for a merge so i think uh bill had asked a question you know, could we go over merge or how to merge records? And I'm going to, I think there's a, an example in the system here. I'm going to look for some specific records that I have. Okay, yeah. This Earl Lindsay, uh, prospect Earl Lindsay. So there's two records, as you can see here. And you can see that they're this exact same APN. So this would be a candidate for a merge records. So now just for the benefit of the new people, you know, some were saying, well, okay, a person with multiple properties, one owner with multiple properties, that's not the reason to merge records. You don't want to merge records if you have one person that has multiple properties. So this means they would have two different APNs here. You only want to merge if the person, same name, same address, um, and basically the same APN, and it ended up in the system somehow. And there's various ways that you can end up with duplicate records. So what we would do in that case, we would select both of these records. And remember, I'm at this level here. So any records within the um, within the screen full of data that you have, you always want to use these commands, these lower level commands, not, none of these upper level commands, because remember, these are based on status, whatever status. These lower level grade commands are based on records that you have selected in the screen of data that you have that's displaying. So. I'll select those and I'm going to hit merge. And basically, this gives me the opportunity to merge records. You have record A over here, which is record number 51, and you have record B over here, which is record number 50. You get a chance to go down and look and review all the information that is showing between those two records. And you determine which one you want to be the Bible record. Which one do you want to remain in the system? That means the other one is going to be deleted. So if I say, well, I'm going to select record A, all the data from record A gets moved over into this center column. And when that happens, that means that's going to be the record that is going to show um, at the end of the day. 
this other record B over here is going to be deleted or marked for deletion in the database. Okay, so I want to make sure that that's basically how you would merge records. And, and what you would do then is just say merge and continue. And once it merges, when I go back and I search for those records, there was record 50 and 51 specifically, you see that we took record A, so the only one, there's only one left, uh, 51 is now going to be gone. All right. And since you've only got one record, we merged basically the data from those two records. Um, you can then move forward knowing that you don't have any more duplicates for this particular customer. Now, that stated, the very next question we get after that, OK, well, and I've had this question several times or just in the last like month. Um, person has said, well, I merged two records by mistake, okay? And I need to reverse that merge. And how do I do that or can I do that? So, Because I, I don't want to go back and rebuild that other record in the investment dominator. Okay, so how do you, basically we're talking about undoing your command and I've gone over this, you know, in, at a high level, how to undo. Pretty simple, straightforward. Come up here to our My Team, left click on My Team, left click on the Activity Log. And you can see here where uh, at this particular time, Warren came in and he, he did a merge. He updated and we have land deals record number 50 but merge d so in the merge the record that got deleted is record number 51 and all of its fields so over here to the far right you can see where it says i can undo this and and obviously you can only do this um if uh you can only undo it if you have um you're sure that you want to put everything back to the state that it was in. All right, so if I say undo, it says, are you sure you want to undo this activity? Because now it's going to put record 51 back in your system again. And if I say, okay, all right, I'd undid that at this particular time. And I go back in, look at that record. Record uh, 50 and 51. And there we have record number 51 again. So if I select it, you know, that's this is basically how you do it and undo it. Uh, there's always a way to undo something in Investment Dominator, but we, you know, it's it's uh, you have to kind of know where to look for it. If I say merge again. So again, I could come back in and do this same prospect, uh, the same procedure again and merge those records. So then. Um, Another question has just come in. So what what if let's see, what if there is a different there's different info in each record? Okay. There is different info. And I don't I don't exactly know what info you might be referring to, uh, Bill, but if there is different info, that's why you have this opportunity at this point to select, you know, I want to, you know pull this information from record A over into my data. So if I select record A again, so that's record 51, all the data is gonna come over here. Now, if, if I go down my list of data and I see that there's something different about the data over here that I wanna pull in, um, and I didn't set up anything like that, but uh, if I did see something different in this other column, which would be for our record B, I can just simply hit this arrow and that's gonna pull that data over into my Bible record. Um, so let's say if I had a short legal description and I wanted that 
over here, but I didn't have a short legal in record A, um, it it would uh, it would pull that data over into that information. So um, you know links. We've already pulled that information. Um, there's nothing over here in links, so there would be nothing to pull over. But what I'm saying is if you have some different data over here in record B, if you selected record A for your Bible record, you could just, you know, one field at a time, you could uh, you could have uh, moved over into your middle column there, okay? All right, people. Um, that's a lot on merge. Um, hopefully that gives you some clarity on merge and how you might use it. Good questions. Thank you for your questions. I want to, um, you're very welcome, Bill. Okay. And it's fun, funny he mentioned links because that was, that was the next item I was going to get into. And I know I don't have the time today because I'm going to be getting off the call here in a couple of minutes don't have the time today to to really work with links um, because we're gonna I was gonna show you how to set up a private link and a public link we're also going to um, I'm working on the demonstration for your upwork um, because we went through the the class that we, we had a few you know we had a few issues with uh, folks understanding just how to put in a upwork um, job posting want to make sure that you clearly understand that. So um, I'm also going to be discussing, you know, why we use tags um, on some of our next. Ah, thank you, Scott. <laughs> thank you. Um, yes, uh, yes, I do have to do a special toast at the rehearsal dinner. So <laughs> that's going to be, it's going to be, um, Interesting. I haven't been to a wedding for a long, long, long time. Long time. Um, so we're going to be be getting ready to move on here for the day. But uh, I do want to thank everybody for being on the call and thank you for your your questions. Thank you for your attention and just thank you so much for your dedication to your business. It's uh, I get a chance to speak with a lot of you on our onboard calls and it's just really inspiring. You know, a lot of the reasons that you have your whys. Um, Okay, that's a, a good question that just came in from uh, Carlos too. Uh, should I start sending letters if I don't have um, a website yet? Um, you you can start sending letters. You can start sending letters now. You have to kind of time it because you, your websites, you know, you should be able to get set up, especially within Investment Dominator, in like a couple of days or so. Um, if you don't have a website setup, you can start sending letters and, and you can send them out of Investment Dominator. Um, however, the only the only issue is you have to make sure that you at least have your domains purchased from GoDaddy because remember, um, and that you have those domains that they're yours. And because remember that website, especially on your prospect letters, your buying site, website name, whatever that domain is, is going to appear on your neutral letter. So you'll want to have your neutral letter have the correct domain so that people can actually go into your buying site if they want to. Um, so you have to time it um, because it does take a little while once you send your neutral letters out for you maybe to get a response. Um, we didn't do it like that. We had our site set up and we had we were ready to go because when we pushed that button and those letters went out, we started getting calls. So that's what I would I would urge you to do is to get that in place before you start sending out letters, because if especially if you're sending to a hot county and you don't know it's a hot county until you've sent to it. So uh, take your time. Get your sites in place, then send your letters out. That would be my advice. OK, let me leave you with this thought. I'm going to have to I'm going to have to end for now and uh, I will be back on Monday right here at 5 p.m. I uh, appreciate you guys very much. And uh, as I was saying, I, I have a chance to talk with you guys and and you have so many r great reasons as to why you're doing this business. And I want you to keep those 
in the forefront of your mind when you know difficult times come up because that's that will serve you well. So let's uh, have a quote here from Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. He said, success isn't always about greatness. It's about consistency. As consistent hard work leads to success, greatness will come. I like that. Success isn't always about greatness. It's about consistency. As consistent hard work will lead to success, greatness will come. Keep that in mind. And I uh, want you all to have a wonderful weekend, wonderful remainder of your week and, and a very safe weekend. And I look forward to being back here with you on Monday at 5 p.m. Take care, everybody. Thanks again. Bye-bye.